Guten schönen Tag. Together we will explore the suitability or the production potential of the crop, the plant, sorghum, in the country of Niger. We will do this using the model GAEZ, standing for Global Agroecological Zones. Together, let's go to a browser and look for GAEZ. G -A -E -Z. Uh, I've taken us to the URL GAEZ.FAO.org. When we're here, the option at the top, let us click crop data. Scrolling down, a table will appear, but may take a moment to appear. This example analysis is looking, we'll be looking at sorghum, but we can choose any of several crops, any of several countries. So let us choose first sorghum, S-O-R-G-H-U-M. Geographic level is, we're interested in Niger, uh, country, but we can also choose major hydrological basins, subcontinental regions, um, encouraged to explore. Uh, the interest here is to look at the production potential or the suitability, looking at the historical slash current suitability potential, comparing with the future under different climate projections. But let us begin with the historical. Under climate data source, let us choose CRUTS32. This is observational climate historical. Uh, again, we'll compare historical slash current to future potential under different climate projections. Um, and with GAEZ, uh, future potential, future suitability is only simulated assuming high input levels, high nutrient input levels. That suggests there is no nutrient deficiency in this suitability production potential analysis. So to do a comparison of historical slash current to future, let us choose the high input level. Again, everything is available for uh, uh, different questions or analyses as appropriate. Uh, so with this, let's download file. Click on the upward arrow and go show in folder. I right click, I go extract all, extract. All right, let's walk through what these different files mean in this folder. BSG, ah, I've chosen, I believe, biomass sorghum. I'm interested for this analysis, just sorghum. So let's go back. Yeah, exactly. I've chosen biomass sorghum. Let me just choose sorghum. Yeah. Everything else stays the same and download file. So the first letters represent the crop that we're uh, evaluating. Upward arrow, show in folder, uh, right click, extract all. Okay. So SRG stands for sorghum, CRUTS32, uh, the climate we're using, uh, this is observational climate, historical climate, also represented with HIST. The next digits represent the years that we're looking at in the historical context. So 8110 stands for 1981 to 2010, while this earlier or previous file, 1961 to 1990. The H, stands for high, high input level or uh, non-limiting nutrients. R stands for rain fed or I for irrigated. Uh, also interested here, let's look together at rain fed sorghum potential in Niger. So we're gonna be focusing on the R. And the CTR stands for country. So out of all these files, let's choose the most uh, recent one. So 81, 1981 to 2010. High input rain fed country level analysis for sorghum historical time period. Um, double click on this to open it up. There are many options available, uh, different land classes available, exclusion classes available, and we walk through that right now. So let me highlight everything. I click on data. 
and in data, I'm looking for the option filter. I hit filter, and that creates a drop down menu for all the columns. Now, we're going to play with the columns AEZ, EXC, LC, and admin. Um, if we go back to our browser, let's scroll up just slightly. We're looking for this line. Read here to know more about the content and structure, so on and so on. I'm going to click the word here. And this will open up in another tab, uh, information on how to interpret these crop summary tables. Also highlighting the things that I've just mentioned and will continue to mention, such as the naming of the files and so on. So AEZ, AEZ zones, divide the world into tropics, um, subtropics, temperate, so on and so on. Uh, for this analysis, let us look at the production potential of rain-fed sorghum on current cropland. Another analysis that's equally as interesting is the production, production potential suitability on total land in Niger, or just on uh, irrigated current cropland, or maybe for this analysis, more appropriate cropland uh, that's rain-fed and not necessarily equipped with irrigation. For this analysis, again, let's choose um, cropland, total cropland, um, uh, coming back to AEZ, AEZ, this divides the land sort of into agroecological zones. We're not going to uh, limit the analysis to being within a, a certain agroecological zone or climate, but rather looking at all total land. We'll restrict it based on exclusion class, protected status, or protected status, or if it's irrigated or not irrigated. So all to say, all land, um, when it's defined in an agroecological way, is equivalent for this particular example analysis. So for agroecological zone class, let's choose 35. We're going to look at all land. Take here. I click select all to deselect, and then select specifically 35. OK. Let's look at EXC. So EXC discusses when something is, for example, a protected land or land excluded for certain areas because it has a certain importance related to biodiversity, wetlands, and so on, uh, or force in this case. Uh, five would be looking at all land within Niger, not discussing protected or exclusion status. But for this example analysis, let's choose number one. So the areas we will consider do not currently have any protection, protected status. They are not excluded for any reason. So coming back to Excel, for EXC, click Select All to deselect everything. Select, sorry, select one. So we're only going to be looking at land that is not currently protected or excluded for some particularly important reason. LC. Um, here we come to sort of the land use. So uh, as discussed, we will be looking at, we can, for this example, look at all cropland. Equally interesting analyses include looking at the total land in Niger, looking at just cropland that is currently rain-fed, or all cropland that is equipped with irrigation. But for this analysis, let's choose land class 1. This drop-down menu, deselect all, select 1. Great. So we're looking at non-protected lands, lands that are not excluded. When uh, all, all land is, a, is open to this analysis, whether it's temperate or, or have you, what have you. And LC stands for all cropland. Uh, the last one we're looking at, admin. For this analysis, we're interested in the country of Niger. So I type in Niger. Select all to deselect everything. Niger. Ah, great. And we're just left with one line. Move this over. OK. The next lines I want to draw our attention to are those that start with suit, which stands for suitability. So we see suit VS, which stands for very suitable. Suit S is suitability, suitable grade. MS is moderately suitable. MS, lowercase m, marginally suitable, very marginally suitable, and not suitable. When we're discussing the suitability of a certain crop, when we're using GAEZ, 
generally non-suitable, very marginally suitable, and marginally suitable can all be considered somehow very low and probably too low for production potential. In any case, all of them are involved in this analysis, but we can focus more prominently on that which is moderately suitable, suitable, or very suitable. Uh, again, the labelings for these things come from this document. I find it right here. So NS all the way to VS, uh, not suitable, marginally, moderately suitable, and very suitable land. Uh, just to see right now the distribution um, of very suitable to very marginally suitable, let us highlight this line. So I drag and highlight this line all the way to suitable, non-suitable. Then holding control, I also highlight the line above it so we have labels in our graph. I go insert, uh, click the pie graph, the pie graph again. Let's increase, increase uh, the font size. And let's give it a name. Let's give it the name of this Excel document. Also to call it the beginning. Suitability. Sorghum, rain fed, high input, historical. Ah, oh, on current cropland. On current cropland. Or at least cropland from 2010. Okay. What we see from this graph is it's dominated by marginally suitable, but we see. Uh, one thing that can also be interesting is to see the percentages of this. Uh, perhaps we take that at the next step. So here is the distribution of the land on current cropland, uh, the suitability of current cropland for rain-fed sorghum high input. Uh, the interest is to compare this with uh, uh, what might happen in the future under different climate projections. Let's go back to our first tab. And rather than choosing CRUTS32, let's choose Ensemble. So taking a, a median or average of the uh, many models of different climate projections that GAEZ is using. Uh, and let's download this file. This file is somewhat bigger as it has many uh, RCPs, or representative concentration pathways, so many versions of what the representative uh, carbon dioxide concentration of the atmosphere will be. Um, also, different date ranges are available. We'll see 2020s, 2050s, 2080s. Okay, this takes two minutes left. Let's go here and also view add percentage labels onto this pie graph. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to say equals this divided by the sum of all of, from very suitable to non-suitable. I assume it equals this, but let's do it in this way in any case. I'm just going to put dollar signs in front of this. Great, then I will drag this over. Let's multiply everything by 100 just so we can discuss percentages instead of fractions. Okay, we create a new pie graph using this line, now holding control, dragging across this line. Insert, pie graph. Now, data labels. This is nice. Let me remove some digits here. Okay. 
Uh, let's keep it like this for now. So we see near 60% is marginally suitable, but what's more interesting is around 18% is moderately suitable. Um, around 10% is suitable grade category, and about 5% is very suitable. Now I've downloaded this new one, show in folder. All right, extract all. Okay, so again, we have many more files in this folder. Let's walk through it. SRG stands for sorghum. Ensemble stands for the historical, sorry, the future projections ensemble. So using many models of climate change, um, temperature, precipitation, and taking an average of these. Now what we see here is RCP2P6. This stands for RCP representative concentration pathway um, simulation 2.6. That the other ones include 4.5, 6.0, and 8.5. Um, we can go on through this in another video, but for this example, let's choose representative concentration pathway 4.5. So higher than the current uh, representative or equivalent carbon dioxide concentration within the atmosphere, but lower than the, the most extreme example, which would be at the highest example would be uh, 8.5. So let's, for this analysis example, choose 4.5. Now we have the choice of the 2020s, the 2050s, or the 2080s. For this example to be um, not so far but not so close as we're past 2020, let's go 2050s. So 2050, and the S stands for 2050s, because this will represent a 30-year average, average from 2041 to 2070. Again, just pointing that that is also available somewhere in here. Yeah, right here, 2050s is actually representing uh, a 30 year average from 2041 to 2070. Okay. Um, the H again stands for high input, a uh, high nutrient input. The I stands for irrigated. Uh, we're interested in rain-fed. The zero, or lack of a zero, stands for the effect of carbon dioxide fertilization. So in a world where the concentration of carbon dioxide or carbon dioxide equivalent greenhouse gas in the atmosphere is higher, uh, plants may use less water. Um, we leave it at that for now. So, but. We are interested in the effect of carbon dioxide fertilization, so the effect of an increased carbon dioxide uh, concentration in the atmosphere on crop production versus ignoring it. Uh, the zero ignores the effect of carbon dioxide fertilization, so we'll take the file that includes this. And again, we're looking at the country level. So sorghum, ensemble, RCP4, P5, 2050s, high input, rain-fed, country. This is the file we're looking for. Again, we can look at 2080s. We can do many different comparisons, all available. This is just an example showing one where to find such files. Okay, let's highlight everything again. Go to data, click filter, drop down menus come everywhere. A, E, Z, I choose 35. Inclusion status, I choose one. Land class, I choose one. And admin, I choose Niger. And I'm left with one. Uh, let us do the same thing we did previously. Uh, let us do the percentages again. So I'm gonna make this equal to this. Let us just do one thing. Let us confirm that the sum of very suitable to non-suitable equals the extent. Yeah, so extent in this case is current crop plant in Niger. So rather than dividing by the sum, I can simply divide by extent. So let's go equals divided by this. 
and then times 100. I'm using a, a new German keyboard. Divided by this, let's just throw some dollar signs in front of this. Drag this across. Okay. Highlight also this. Insert pie chart, pie chart. Okay, uh, looks quite significantly different than we had before. Let's see if I can just drag this, minimize this, drag this here. There's surely a nicer way of doing this, but we'll get the idea here. And let's put on some chart labels. Okay. Okay. So we see uh, a bar chart might also be interesting, but let's stick with the pie charts just for now. We have the suitable land, which has gone from 5.4% to 10%. We see the suitable category has gone from 9% from to 21%, 20.5%. And the moderately suitable from 18% to 51%, being almost consuming. Um, again, perhaps a bar chart is a more appropriate way to look at this, but we're getting the idea here. So what we're seeing in this analysis is that on current cropland, the production potential, or more appropriately, the suitability of rain-fed sorghum within Niger uh, increases uh, with high inputs quite significantly. Both uh, or all three of very suitable, uh, suitable and moderately suitable increase significantly, while uh, marginally suitable, very marginally suitable and not suitable uh, all decrease or stay similar. Uh, that's all for now. Uh, schönen Morgen, schönen Tag, schönen Abend, gute Nacht.